and today is going to be a an on-demand video. <laughs> Everybody has been asking about Arthur and he will be celebrating a birthday really soon. So let's bring him in and uh, he is still my husband but he's a year older. Hello, well, here we are again. I think it's been almost a year since I interviewed you. And because uh, this is Arthur, my husband, and I'm Sandra of Life Over 60 with Sandra. Uh, it's been about a year. Has it? I think, since I interviewed you. But because you have this momentous day coming up in October, you're going to be celebrating what birthday? 69. <laughs> really, what birthday are you going to be celebrating? 94. 94, wow. Do you know anybody who is lived no, in no, 94 all, in family? All the people I know that I grew up with and all, they're all, they're all dead. Oh, I don't have any living uh, people. I outlived them all. What would you say is the highlight of 2020? The highlight of the 2020, the COVID virus. Well, other than that, maybe the cruise? The cruise of, uh, what cruise was that? The Emerson and... Oh, oh, uh, what was the name of that? The, uh, Sail Across the Sun. Uh, wonderful. It was a, a, a tr you know, I really didn't want to go. It was really, truly a wonderful experience. Uh, it was so light and so interesting and everything. Uh, there was something doing all the time. And the people were just jovial and uh, nice. And uh, it was just a wonderful trip that lingers onward uh, long after it's gone. I still uh, look back on it and I say, gee, this was really, you, truly wonderful. It was the happiest cruise that I think we've ever been on, but I'm gonna tell you what happened. He's too modest. Uh, my son is the lead singer of uh, Tonic, and he also has a group, Ezra Ray Hart, made up of Mark McGrath, Kevin Griffin of Better Than Ezra, and of course, Emerson of Tonic. And this was a special rock cruise that we were on, and we were the oldest people on the cruise. But while we were sitting in the audience of this huge theater, all of a sudden, Mark McGrath um, started talking about Emerson's father and uh, how he was in the war. And all of a sudden, the spotlights in the theater came up to the where we were and shone on Arthur. They made him stand up and they said, thank you for your service. And then what happened all during the cruise after that? Everybody, <laughs> you know, people came over to me and said, gee, that was wonderful, thank you for your service, you know? I mean, uh, it, it was truly a momentous occasion for me to have that recognition. Don't forget I was a World War II combat vet and uh, that was a long, long time ago. You're probably one of the few left. Right? I'm uh, just one of the few left. It's uh, really, uh, uh, you know, it's a, when you wonder, you, you wonder, uh, why me? So uh, there must be a reason for it. But of all the rock stars, and this was a cruise just full of rock stars, it was so much fun, as I said before, but Arthur became <laughs> the celebrity on the cruise, forget the rock stars. Yeah, yeah. It was really a wonderful, wonderful thing. I'm looking forward to going again. I don't know if they'll ever have it again. I don't know, you know if they'll have cruises. It, 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 they, I hope they have it again, you know? It, it was a big effort, but it was just a wonderful cruise because the people were just wonderful. Yeah, it was, it was really great. And this year also, my son came out with an album dedicated to Arthur called 32,000 Days, which is just a few days shy of 90 years, but my son started writing, Emerson started writing the album when Arthur was 90, and uh, it took him to be to 93 years to, to write it and produce it and get it out. Because of COVID, everything changed. Mm -hmm. We just watched Keith Urban, and um, he's even doing concerts at home. So the whole music industry no, is he's kind doing of, it outside of the well, garages. You know, no, but in his garage, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Not, not in a big... Mm -hmm theater. Okay, so 2020 and COVID has been a very strange existence for all of us. Um, I wanted to ask you, we've been watching a lot of television, and I want to ask you, what is your, and we're watching commercials, of course, what is your least favorite commercial? My least favorite commercial is my pillow. 
my pillow, my pillow, it, it's just unbearable because uh, every five minutes they're on. And a lot of uh, other commercials have taken uh, heed of that and starting to come out again. Like the, uh, uh, yeah, there's so many that are starting to emulate my pillow. It just goes to show well, you, if you hammer you, why, away. Why do you talk to him? No, because uh, people watch television and they believe what they say. 90% <coughs> of the stuff that they're selling and peddling is not true. So you Especially hate. the supplements and the uh, the creams and and uh, all that crap. So so, but why do you talk back to Mike Lindell? You know, you say, you know. No, I I, I think this guy Mike Lindell is he's a an, he's he, an entrepreneur. He's a genius. He's a genius. He, he he could sell anything. He is just a terrific guy that had taken a, a stupid little thing, a pillow, and made it into a national. Uh, event uh, that is on every 10 minutes. All right, I want to ask you, um, we have an anniversary coming up. We've been married 36 years. And um, what advice do you have for people who get married when they're 57 for the first time? And I know you're gonna say, don't do it. <laughs> don't other, do it, don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> but other than that, what advice do you have for uh, staying married for 36 Make years. Make sure you know you, you marry a woman that has money. That, <laughs> that's a prerequisite. You have to marry a rich woman. And uh, when you marry a rich woman, make sure that she doesn't have any children. You know, none whatsoever or looking forward to any children. And, uh, and uh, three, uh, that she loves you. And anything you need and you want, you just ask for and you have it. Wow, you made all the wrong decisions. <laughs> you married a woman that didn't I have did. money, that had children. Oh yeah. my God, yeah. two out of three is not yeah. bad. Yeah. Um, so have you been to the beach lately? No, I haven't. And uh, I, I, you have to you know, have the energy. And uh, at 94, I'm starting to lose my energy. I don't have any muscle anymore. I lost all my muscle. So, uh, you know, things starting to, to go down a little bit. All right, what advice would you have for these young people today that are rioting in the streets and, and causing all kinds of chaos? Oh gosh, there's so much to say about it, but look at history. Look, look at D-Day and look at all the things that uh, we went through to achieve the success that we are in America. And these people are just tearing down and, and firing and rioting and uh, they, they know, don't know history. They know nothing. The, you know, you burn down a building that you live in, where are you going to go? And uh, it, it, it's truly awful uh, that, uh, uh, you know, nobody could stop it. Yeah. What were you doing in the 50s? I was going to high school, a grade school in high school. What were you doing? I was uh, just out of Mercherine in 47. 1947, I was out to Berkshire and uh, I uh, didn't have any profession. I was a, a sailor, you know, and I uh, didn't have any profession. I didn't have any schooling because uh, they uh, they didn't give any schooling to the Berkshire because we were entitled to it. No college. We were no college. We were on the GI Bill, so I couldn't go to school. And I had no profession, and uh, I said, how am I going to make a living? And uh, I, uh, you know, I start peddling, you know, uh, sunglasses and, you know, different, different uh, things. On like the I streets, got a whole lot on the streets, streets of New York. Streets of New York. And uh, it, it was pretty uh, interesting, but it was hard. And while I was peddling, I was, uh, I must say, I wasn't a bad looking guy. And I had the gift of gab, you know, I could really talk. And I had a lot of people stop and listen to me. And uh, a number of people, if they listened to my spiel or something, uh, used to give me their card and say, look me up, you know, I'd like to talk to you. And uh, I had uh, many encounters with some very interesting people. What is, what is your secret to success? I fidget, there? I fidget. <laughs> it the, the most important thing that I do to keep alive is uh, I, when, I, when I look at myself and all, I'm always fidgeting. I'm never still. If I'm sitting, I'm fidgeting. If I'm, I'm doing anything, sleeping, I'm fidgeting. And uh, I don't know where it comes from, but I'm never still. 
I know it drives me crazy. Yeah, but, <laughs> but I think uh, fidgeting is uh, keeps me alive. You know, it makes me move and moves my 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 hands, my feet, my my muscles and everything. But uh, the number one thing is fidgeting. Yeah, I think it's kinetic energy. You know, you're like the energizing bunny. You yeah. keep going no, and really, going. Really, I mean, it's, I, I like to stop fidgeting, but there's no way I could stop fidgeting. Like I'm sitting here and I'm fidgeting. <laughs> that is true. We've had, you know, last week we had horrendous winds. And I know you probably have all seen our cactus that we have on the deck, but we have this huge cactus that is about five or six feet tall. And we came up to the garden after the storm and our poor cactus was down. But we had two really, really nice young neighbors, guys, and they helped us write it up and they put a rope around it. Well, two nights ago, we again had horrible wind up here. And because the pot is kind of compromised now, it's kind of half down Broke. again. So, so we have a big thing to try to get because it must weigh 300 pounds, uh, trying to get somebody up here to repot it and put it in we have the We, we have a, a big pot now. It's just yeah. a matter of getting lifting it up and putting it into the pot and uh, covering it with some yeah. soil. So it's going to be a big deal, but that's, that's our problems. Well, you know, when you're retired and you're senior citizens, those are the kind of problems that you have. You know who Larry David is? Yes. Of Curb Your Enthusiasm, yes. and he wrote uh, some, the show Seinfeld. Seinfeld. Did you know that a lot of people say that you're like Larry David? Yes, they do. They said they said to me, "You're marvelous. You know, you're a terrific guy. You're just like Larry David." So I said, "Is that good?" He says, "That's wonderful." <laughs> well, Larry David was kind of like off the wall a lot, wasn't he? No, he wasn't. He was. He knew exactly <laughs> where he was going and what he was doing, and uh, he uh, turned it into an empire. Yeah, and he always, well, at least his character always, mm -hmm. he had no switch, you know. Mm -hmm. There was no switch to say what to say and what not to say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, a terrific, uh, terrific mind. All right, what do you plan to do for the rest of your life? The rest of my life is that... Number one, how old do you think you're going to be around? Maybe till about 110. Oh, wow. No. Well, you were a merchant marine, so it seems like um, you're like me. You've got the sea inside of you. I really love near, being near the water. I, 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 we have been watching the commercial on South Dakota, and it looks so beautiful. And it's low taxes, you know, probably small towns, easy living. But I can't be so far away from the water no, in my family. No, but people don't realize it. It gets bitter cold. Not in South Dakota? South Dakota, yeah. South North, North Dakota, 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 maybe. Both of them. Uh, North and South Dakota connected. It gets cold in South Dakota. Well, yeah. Yeah, well we're not cold people anymore. Uh, uh. Uh, congratulations. You're almost 94. And... Uh, it, Everybody's been asking about you. You have such a fan club here on my channel. So I thought I would bring you in today, even though it's kind of cloudy and overcast and very humid. And as I said, it's been raining solid for two Makes the straight flowers days. Go. It's It'd be great the for the flowers, but we have a lot of excess water that we have to get rid of. So, so um, you See, are I'm still fidgeting. my husband, but uh, you're a fidgeter. Mm. <laughs> but if you start fidgeting, and you and you become a fidgeter, it'll make you more, you know, it make you healthy. And when you wind him up, it never stops. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, please do something kind for yourself. Uh, be kind to other people. Give them a call. Send them a text and tell them that you care and that you love them. And my sunglasses keep slipping off my nose. And uh, let's not forget to share the love. <laughs> All right. Take care. I love you and. I hope to see you in my next video.